And so I, I trust that as you've been reading some of the Gospels and you're reading some of the things Jesus did and Jesus said that, that it, it's come to life and, and, and you look at that with different eyes and you realize this is how the Father is because God shows us himself through, through Jesus. All right, now, last weekend, the Easter weekend, we, we looked at some of the stories of Jesus and we asked ourselves this question. What can we learn about the Father through looking at the Son? Remember, what can we learn about the Father through looking at the Son? And we looked at two stories on Friday. We looked at the, at the story of the woman caught in adultery. And now the religious people dragged her before Jesus and basically demanded that she be stoned, she be killed. That was their custom. That was the law. And, and Jesus says to her, he says, I don't condemn you. He says, go and sin no more. Now, what did we learn about the father there in that, in that little story? Was that the father is kind and compassionate and he's forgiving. Jesus forgives her. He says, neither do I. I, I, I condemn you. He says, go. But he doesn't end there. He says, go and sin no more. And so the father is kind and compassionate and he's forgiving. No doubt about that. But he doesn't tolerate sin. And so for us, there's no, no messing with sin and thinking we just come and, and just keep on asking for forgiveness, all right? And then on, on, on Sunday, we looked at the next story, and it was a story of the rich young ruler. And Jesus says to him, he says, go and sell everything you have. He says, go and sell it and come and follow me. Ah, the man's face and countenance and shoulders, everything just fell, just sagged. And he walks away, the Bible says, because... He was very wealthy. There's no way he's going to sell everything, get rid of everything and follow, follow Jesus. And so what did we learn from, from that story? Well, I think the important thing was Jesus didn't call after him. Jesus, when, when this rich young guy walked away, Jesus didn't say, hey, hang on, hang on, come here. Let's talk about it, you know. Let's see what we can figure out. We'll work something, no. Jesus let him go. He got turned and walked away, and Jesus never called after him. And I think what we learn about God through that story is, is that God is not going to beg and plead with us to follow him or to serve him. And so God will show us the right way. And he'll speak to us. And we saw last week how he speaks different ways. He'll speak through the word. Sometimes through a friend. Through one of your children. Through a parent. Sometimes through a message like this. God speaks to us. And then he leaves us. And he's not going to beg. beg. He's not going to nag. All right, I think one of the reasons we believe he may be a father, not a mother. All right, and so God's not going to beg, he's not going to plead, he's certainly not going to nag. He leaves us, it's, a, it's up to us. Now, let, let me just clarify something quickly. Why did God tell him to go and, uh, uh, Jesus tell him to go and sell everything? Was the issue money? Does God have an issue with us having money or issue with us being wealthy? Not at all, not at all. As long as it doesn't have a heart. That's the big thing. The issue isn't the money. Remember this. The issue is the heart. Let me read it quickly. In Matthew 6 verse 19, Jesus says, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. All right. He's referring to South Africa. All right. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy where thieves do not break in and steal. And then he says this, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Issue is the heart. And so God, God doesn't want to share a heart. Doesn't want to share your heart with your money. Or with your career. Or for the ladies with your children. God says, I, I want you to put me first. That's, that's what God wants. He says, I, I want you to put me first. And we looked at scripture last week, uh, how God says we need to put him first and all these other things will be added. He says, I, I, want, I want everything. 
or nothing at all. That's what God says. All right. So that's what we learned. And that was just quickly to recap last, last weekend, the Easter weekend. We had such a great weekend. Now this morning we're going to look at one more story from the life of Jesus. And let's see what we can discover about the Father. All right. John chapter 9, verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Good question. I think it's a great question. Because you and I have asked that at times. We've wondered, you know, did I do something wrong? You know, why, why is this happening to me? And as a pastor, I've often had people come and ask me, you know, pastor, did I do something wrong? Why am I going through this this nonsense, you know, uh, did, did, did I sin? Am I busy reaping something that I sowed down the line? And so Jesus' disciples, they certainly believed that. And they just assumed when somebody went through a difficult time, when, when some, they went through something bad, they did something bad. And so you know what they believe? Bad things happen to bad people. So you go through something bad, you're bad. You bad. You may hide it. You may pretend you, you're good. You may even come to church and pretend. And they, this is what they believed. No, oh, you've, you've done something. You've done something bad. And maybe you're looking at your own life and you're wondering, is what I'm going through the result of me doing something bad? Do bad things happen to only to bad people? Or do bad things sometimes happen to good people? Or maybe you're wondering, is, is, is God punishing me? God punishing me? Or, or am, I, am I reaping something that I've sown? And so I want to quickly try and answer those three questions for us this morning. Is God punishing me? Am I reaping something? Or, you know, do bad things happen to, to bad people? Let's just quickly unpack those things. And let's look at the question, the, the reaping one. A, am, I, am I busy reaping maybe something that I've sown in the past? Possible? Very possible. So, for instance, if your credit card is maxed out and in the red, yeah, it's probably because you've been spending too much. Or well, she's been spending too much. I don't know. All right? But there's a reason. There's cause and effect. There's, there's sowing and there's, there's, there's reaping. And so sometimes it could be because, because you've, you've been reaping bad seed, and so now, now, now you're sowing that. But this is what I've learned, and I want you to hear this. If you've been sowing bad seed, generally you'll know about it. You don't have to go wonder. I wonder if, if I've been sowing bad seed. I, I, I wonder. Listen, if, 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 if your credit card is loaded, <laughs> that, you know, it's probably because you've been overspending. All right? So if, if you've been overspending... That's why your credit card is, is loaded. If, if, if you've been overeating, like, like myself, that's probably why you step on the bathroom scale. That electronic readout says, one at a time, please. Well, you want one foot or what? You know? Come on. There's a cause and effect. You know why it's doing that. Or if you've been talking behind somebody's back, and then suddenly one day they're not too nice toward you anymore, and... and, and and, and, and you can just sense there's a bit of a vibe. It's probably because you've been talking behind their back and they found out. And, and so most of the time, you'll know. You'll know if you've been sowing bad seed. But what if you have no idea? What if you're sitting and you're saying, well, I, I'm not sure. Did, did I sow bad seed? Is, is, this, is, 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 this, you know, is, is there a reason for this? And this is where the disciples were. They wanted to know. Did this guy sin? Did his parents sin? What, what's the reason? And Jesus answers them, and he says to them in verse 3, neither this man nor his parents sinned. You know what he's saying? Just because something was bad happening to you doesn't mean you've done something bad. Just because something bad is happening doesn't mean you've done something bad. And then Jesus gives us the reason, and he says to them, he says, this happened so that... The works of God should be revealed in him. So that the works of God should be revealed in him. What, what does that mean? So that God can be glorified. That's what it means. He says, that this, this guy's going through that 
so that God can be glorified. Let, let me give you another example from the Old Testament now. Remember when the children of Israel were getting ready to leave uh, Egypt, the place where they'd spent 400 years in, as, as slaves in, in captivity? And so God has got a great plan for them. He's got the promised land and all of that lined up. But the Bible says God causes Pharaoh to harden his heart. He said, now hang on, that doesn't make sense. I thought you want them out. Yes, I do. But it's not going to be easy because God is, is causing him to harden his heart. In other words, God is causing him to be difficult. You say, but that's crazy. Why would God do that? Because if it was too easy, God wouldn't take the glory. Simple as that. You say, well, why does God need the glory? Is God insecure? Does God lack confidence? No, 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 no. When God is glorified, our faith is amplified. When God is glorified, our faith is amplified. And so what, what happens is the children of Israel, they, they're getting ready to leave, and Pharaoh keeps on saying no. And so Moses comes back and says to them, you guys better pray, because he refuses to let us go. And so they pray and they pray. And Moses goes back, and Pharaoh says, no, forget it, get lost. And so he goes back to the children of Israel and says, you guys get a bit of get praying more. And so they're praying and they're praying and they're praying. And that's what you and I have done at times. We pray for something and we pray and we pray and we pray. Guess what happened when that breakthrough came? Wow, look at what God has done. And so what happens? God takes the glory. And their eyes suddenly are on God. And they're like, wow, thank you, Lord. And what happens? Their faith is strengthened, built up amplified and so they're ready for the next thing bring it on because we've got a God who's alive you see what happens and so sometimes God allows these things to to happen in our lives and we go through a difficult time difficult time so that we can trust him and trust him and trust him and when the breakthrough finally comes wow and so next time when you're praying you're praying nothing is changing don't give up Keep going because God wants to take the glory down the line. And when he does, let me tell you, your faith is going to be strengthened. Listen, pain and suffering is not always the result of sin. As a matter of fact, it's very seldom the result of, of, of someone's sin. And Jesus explains this to his disciples and, and he says to them, he says, by the way, he says one of the main reasons is so that God can be glorified. And so he shares this with them. And it's a brand new idea to them. It's a brand new concept. They've never experienced this before. And so next time, when you're praying and you're trusting God for something, you've lost your job, and now you come and you pray and you pray, or there's a health issue, and you pray and you pray and you trust in God, or there's an issue with a, with a child or with a parent or, or something, and you trust in God, you keep on going, you keep on trusting, because down the line, I'm telling you, when that breakthrough comes, just like the children of Israel, God is going to take the glory. And when He does, your faith is boosted. And you're ready for the next thing. And you say, bring it on, bring it on. I'm ready because my faith is built up. Very often, God's, God's purpose in a crisis is not only to show us His power, but to show those around us His power. Because when your friends and your family and those around you, when, when they look at your life and they see what you're going through, and then break through, you pop up out, uh, on the other side, they... They, they sit and they like, whoa, what happened there? And the medical staff look at it and, 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 and they say, medically, this is impossible. Uh, we can't explain this. This should never have happened. Did you say you were, you were praying? And so when that happens, they sit up. And sometimes people who've been ignorant about God or even indifferent about God, when they see His power manifest through your life and my life, they take note. And it's, a, it's, it's one of the ways that God gets their attention. Because for many people like that, they may not experience His presence and, and, and His power in a service like this, but they can experience it out there in the workplace, in, in, in your life, and see what, what God does. And so let's quickly answer those questions. So we've looked at those three questions, and I think we've answered the, the first one. You know, are, are we reaping what we're sowing? We, we could be. We could be reaping, but if it's the case, you'll know it, all right? So just remember that. 
If you're reaping, you'll know it. You'll know you've done something, something wrong. If you've been treating your wife really badly and bullying her and, 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 and then she goes off and there's an affair or something, yeah, probably, probably the reason. What about the next question? Do bad things only happen to bad people? Or do, it, do, do bad things sometimes happen to good people as well? Absolutely. And Jesus says to us, he says, the reason sometimes bad things happen to good people, so that God can be glorified. And so, so God sometimes puts us through tests because he wants that test to become a testimony. He wants your test to become a testimony. What is a testimony? It's a story that brings God glory. All right? It's easy. What is a testimony in, 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 the, in the Christian sense? It's a story that brings God glory. And so sometimes God allows good people to go through bad things because he's going to get the glory down the line. What about the next question? When bad things happen to good people, is, is God punishing us? No. Jesus took our punishment on the cross, all of it, so that you and I never have to be punished again. So when you and I go through difficult times, one thing you can be sure of, it's not punishment. Jesus carried that 2,000 years ago. This is, this is either God is teaching me something, building character, uh, developing something in my life, or he's using that to, to take glory down the line. You know, there are some things that we're going to learn in the midst of suffering and pain that we'll never learn any other way. Some of the most powerful lessons in my life has been as a result of some of the hardest times in my life. Uh, when one or two things, I, 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 when I think back, of one or two things that went horribly wrong. But I had to go through it. I just had to face it. There was no getting around it, getting over it. I had to go through that, and, and I had to face it. But when I look back today, I can see how, how that changed my life and how it left a lasting impression upon my life. And, and, and I'm richer today because of that, and hopefully slightly, slightly wiser. All right. Hebrews 12 verse 7 says, God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. In other words, don't just give up. God's educating you. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training. This trouble you're in, I think that's a word for someone here today. It isn't punishment. God loves you. The Bible says he's treating you as dear children. It's, it's training. And so sometimes God uses suffering and pain to do what? To make us into who he wants us to be. To take us where he wants us to go so that we can do what he wants us to do. Can I say that again? To make us into who he wants us to be. To take us where he wants us to go so that we can do what he wants us to do. God uses suffering and pain to develop us and to grow us. And so there's always positive that comes out of it. So how do we handle disappointments? Maybe you've grown up in a home where you served God and your parents served God and they both went to church and then one day they got divorced. And it rocked your world because you looked at this and this shouldn't happen and how can this happen? Because they both used to go to church and to make matters worse, Maybe the church that you were in didn't handle it too well. And the church supported one, one parent and not the other. And the one parent kept on coming to church and the other one didn't ever go back to church again. And you stand back and you, you look at this and you say, God, what happened? How, where were you in all of this? And so we go through these disappointments. Oh, let, let me give you another scenario. It's a 17-year-old girl who's praying. And she's, she's praying and praying that this, this certain guy would ask her to the matric farewell. And, and, and this, is, this is, if there's one, one prayer that God must answer, it's that prayer. It's the most important prayer in her little life at that stage. And so she's trusting God and she's praying and praying. When he doesn't ask her, her world comes apart. And, and she thinks God doesn't care and God doesn't answer prayer. And she goes to her mother and she says, I've prayed and I've prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. And her mom is secretly thinking, I prayed and I prayed that he wouldn't ask you. And, <laughs> and 10 years later, 
when she's 27 and she's married, happily married with two children. She thinks back and she says, thank you, God, that you never answered my prayer. <laughs> and we all go through crazy times and disappointments and, and things that we don't understand. And, and that's when we end up asking why. God, why did this happen? Why, why did you allow this? God, why didn't you answer my prayer? God, it, it doesn't make sense. And I want to say to you this morning, there are some questions that we'll never have answered this side of the grave. It's, it's not going to make sense. But we've got to remind ourselves that we serve a good God with good plans for us. When we go through those times where we don't understand and we're tempted to ask why, because we all do, We've got to remind ourselves we serve a good God with good plans for our lives. You see, friends, being a believer doesn't mean that we only believe in good times. Isn't it so? We don't only believe in, in, in good times. It means we believe in a good God who has good plans for us. And when we go through difficult times, and when we go through stuff that, that, we, that we don't enjoy and that don't make sense, what do we do? We trust Him. Because he says, causes all things to work together for the good, those who love him. God, this nonsense, I'm trusting you. God, I'm not, I don't understand it, but I'm trusting you. Listen, Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God. You know what the key word is? No. We know it. We know it. You know, another word for that is we trust. It means when I face something that I don't enjoy, it's okay. Because I know he'll use it in my life. I, I, I trust him that good is going to come out of it. When, when, when I've got questions, God, why? God, how are you going to use this? God, I don't understand. It's okay. It's okay. Because I know. I know. I know. Deep down in the inside. I don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But I know. In other words, I trust. That's the key to our faith. When we don't understand these things, we come before God. Say, God, I, under I, I, I know, I know you make it work together. So when you and I face difficult times, it's tempted for uh, we we tempted to 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 get discouraged and frustrated. And we think, you know, yeah, God, here I am. And, 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 and I'm living for you. And I'm honoring you. Maybe I'm not doing enough. Or maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm doing some things wrong. No, you know what I found? Very often it's not because you're doing things wrong. But it's because you're doing things right. It's because you've stepped up a notch in your spiritual life. It's because you're taking new ground uh, for your family. And you're saying, hey, we're going to church on a Sunday. And, and, and you're making a stand as, as a father in the home. You're saying, this is what we're doing. We're going to church. And, and so you, you're making a stand. And so what's happened? You, you're, you're a threat to the enemy. If you weren't a threat, he wouldn't bother you. <laughs> if, if, if you were heading in the wrong direction, away from God, he would leave you. But as you're walking toward God and, 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 and you're wanting God's way for your life, guess what happens? You're going to get a little bit of opposition along the way. And so one thing is for sure, the enemy is not going to roll out the red carpet in order for you to fulfill your destiny and to follow God and to live for God. Not at all. He's going to give you some opposition. And so he's going to throw in difficulties and he's going to throw in disappointments along the way because he wants to try and get you to question God instead of trust God. He wants you to question God. Instead of trust God. God, why did this happen? God, I don't understand. God, I'm frustrated with this. And what are we doing? We're questioning, questioning, questioning. Instead of saying, I know He causes all things to work together for the good. What's that? It's trust. It's trust. And so if the enemy can get us to question instead of trust, he knows we start going into a tailspin. But as long as, as, long as I trust God, and I say, man, I'm not enjoying this, but I trust I don't understand, but I trust. And this is not great, but, but I'm trusting God. You see, we don't have to explain it. We don't have to see how it's going to work out. What we have to is trust. 
I know He causes all things to work together for the good. In Matthew 13, Jesus tells a story about a farmer who planted some wheat. Let me read it quickly. And Jesus says, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds, weeds among the wheat and then went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, the weeds also appeared. And the owner's servants came to him and said, sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. Listen, whenever we're doing the right thing, just like that farmer, where you're sowing the right seed, you're doing the right thing, and you're coming to church, and you're honoring God and your finances, and you're putting other people ahead of yourself, and, and you're treating others well, don't be surprised when you have some weeds come up as well. And it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. It means you have an enemy. All right? And so these, these farm workers, they come to the, the farmer and they say, we know you sowed good seed. We saw you sow good seed. We carried that seed. And, and we helped you sow the seed. This is not fair. And he says, relax. Relax. He says, we have an enemy. He says, don't make a big deal of it. We have an, an enemy. And so when things go wrong in your life, and you have an accident, or you hijack, they break into your home, your washing machine packs up, or your little dog goes and uproots the neighbor's brand new garden that they did landscape last week, something crazy like that. Listen, don't get all introspective and, oh man, is this sin in my life? Am I reaping something that I've sown? No. You may just have an enemy. And the enemy is just like that farmer is, is, is trying to mess you up. But listen, relax. It's almost like the farmer. Relax. You have an enemy. So what? God promises to make good come out of it. Joseph said to his brothers, he says, hey, you guys intended this for evil. <laughs> he says, God intended it for good. What was he saying? I know. He says, I know. God causes good to come out of this. He says, I know that. And so when you and I go through difficult times and frustrating things, hey, don't get into a tailspin. And don't get all introspective. Who, who sinned? Did he sin? Did the parents sin? You know, am I reaping? You know, is God punished? Don't go down that road. Hopefully we've cleared that stuff. You just come and you say, I know. I know I have a God who loves me. And so what do we learn? What do we learn from the story? What do we learn about the Father? That He is a good God. He's a good God who loves us. And He wants the best for us. And He hasn't promised that life will be easy. Life will be smooth. And you'll never have difficulties. But He has promised. When life isn't easy and life isn't smooth... <laughs> And you have some difficulties. Relax. He says, I'll cause all things to work together for the good. Not, not for everybody. Not for the unsaved. He says, for those who love me. And so if you love God, and you're here this morning, you can, you can relax. You can say, it's just a matter of time. God's going to turn around. I don't know how. I don't know when. It actually doesn't matter. But I know God's going to make good come out of it. All right? There's our lesson for this morning. Come, let's stand. I want to pray for us. Can we bow our heads? Father, for most of us here today, there's some stuff in our lives that we're not enjoying at the moment. We don't understand. 
And we're not trying to look for the reason anymore. We're looking to the solution this morning. And that's you. Thank you, Lord, that we could be here this morning. And just be reminded that you cause all things, not some things, all things, even the things we've messed up. You cause all things to work together for the good of those who love you. And so, God, I pray this morning, my prayer is that we will know that. We will walk out of this place with that boldness and confidence that we know that we know you're in charge. Amen.